Hi there, I'm Melanie Carr, and this is Erotic Abundance Podcast. It's a podcast about how we can use our creative, intimate energy to create our life mission, to create connections and love with the people around us, and use our erotic, sexual, creative energy to create in our lives, to create connection and to have a more fulfilling energy charged and and positive experience in our life. I want to talk about vulnerability and the level of depth in our deep erotic connections that we are able to to create or or manage to to get into with someone but the idea of vulnerability for many people is so intimate and so personal and in many ways I think it's very scary for a lot of people because when you are vulnerable and you do allow a deep intimate connection with another person there's the tendency to go towards codependency, energetic codependency, and not keep your individuality of your own energy for yourself, sharing your energy, and then being able to pull your energy back and create that individual connection for yourself at the same time in a relationship. It's very complicated and Many people are not able to reach that level of vulnerability or or connection with another person. And as relationships become more and more challenging and people are working through difficult and sometimes heavy family patterns and emotional traumas and and all these things are being released and a lot of this stuff is coming out really fast and people are healing very fast right now but at the same time our ability to be vulnerable is so important for us to be able to have deep connections and yet with all the emotional stuff that's happening and coming out and and the level of fear that people are feeling in the world right now about survival and it's making it more and more difficult for people to create that deeper level of vulnerability and I think one of the hardest things is it for it to be also reciprocated if if one person in the relationship has a deep deep level of vulnerability and they're not afraid to love and to connect but the other person is not able to create that same level of connection it creates an instability for the person who's going deeper and more vulnerable and it also has a lot to do with the balance of masculine and feminine energy and you can be for example more feminine submissive and vulnerable with your partner um i feel like a lot of men like to see that kind of energy in women um not all of them some women like can pull on their masculine energy and be more dominant and there can be a balance in the relationship and sometimes the women can take charge and be a little more in the lead as far as sexuality and intimacy goes and it can go back and forth but in a situation for example where the woman is more vulnerable and feminine and submissive and the man is more dominant and more um you know, in in charge of the connection, he has a huge responsibility because if you are a guy out there and you're expecting a woman to be vulnerable and to be um, really open and connected with you and yet you're not willing to open and share your feelings, go through some of the traumas and things that you have, work on healing them with your partner, if the only person that's doing that kind of emotional work is the woman and she's putting herself in a situation where 
she's opening her energy to you in a very vulnerable and open, submissive way, um, it becomes a little bit scary, I think, for for women because even, if, well, it's not just about women because it, there's guys who also can be a little bit more submissive and vulnerable and have a little bit more feminine energy and there's women who like that and prefer to have that more dominant side but this is where the lack of balance gets in the way of the relationship being healthy and in order for the connection and the vulnerability and the deep erotic connection to happen there has to be vulnerability to some extent on both sides and it doesn't mean that always has to be both people being vulnerable at the same time but at some moments in the relationship one person has to be vulnerable and then at other moments the other one has to be vulnerable it's it creates a more balanced situation now the vulnerability doesn't just have to be in the intimacy the vulnerability could be in other areas for example as a woman, you could be very vulnerable in the intimate part of your connection with a man. But maybe in other areas, you are providing more masculine energy in healing or in your work, um, in, in different areas in the home, or um, creating stability emotionally for the other person, or creating stability economically, or... Um, there's you know, many different ways that you can do that. And the other person then in those areas becomes more vulnerable. Um, and this is where they might feel more of a need to have control and have you in a more vulnerable situation as far as intimacy goes. And this is where the balance can be found not always just in one area, but in different areas in the relationship. But there does have to be a certain amount of, of balance because both people need to be vulnerable and both people need to be in a situation where they're willing to be open and put it out there, you know, <laughs> jump into the abyss, put it out on the line, and then be able to experience that intimacy on a much deeper level. And intimacy isn't just about sexual things as well. It has many different areas. It can just be intimacy emotionally or healing. There's many different ways or reasons that this can happen. But I think it's a really good exercise for people to stop and say, take a good look at this and say, do I, do I allow myself to be so vulnerable? And at what point do I pull it back a little and become a little more individual in that area? And not so energetically vulnerable that I'm putting things out of balance. And it, it doesn't mean that you also go looking to see how vulnerable the other person is. That's not really the case at all because it's not like, oh, if you're vulnerable with me, then I'll be more vulnerable with you. But there is certain areas where it needs to become in, in balance. And vulnerability and feminine energy... And then also, like, how can you be vulnerable in your masculine energy in other ways? I mean, if a woman, for example, puts on a sexy lingerie and mm, comes a little bit on a little bit stronger with her masculine energy, she's also being very vulnerable because you don't know in that moment if you could be rejected or if the man's going to be interested in that moment or turned on or or if you I don't know send a photo or something <laughs> to someone or do something that's a little more masculine in your sexuality and experiment with that and see the reaction with your partner whereas when you do something more feminine and see what the reaction is and how can you work on that vulnerability how can you create deeper connection and deeper communication about these different issues and then also taking a look at how men can be vulnerable even though it doesn't seem like they manage their vulnerability quite the same way as a woman does. It's different with guys a lot of times. 
And most women prefer guys that aren't super submissive and vulnerable. And, and yet, if the woman is very dominant and they can share that or they can have a balance between both of them, it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic to take a look at and consider and communicate and share the energy of the vulnerability. And is it feminine vulnerability or masculine vulnerability? And how is it different between the two people? So consider this because vulnerability is super important for a deep erotic connection. And the deep erotic connection with yourself as well. Can you be vulnerable with yourself? Can you be honest with yourself and your emotions and your feelings? So there's something to think about. Have a great day.